everybody, this is Evan Abrams, and today in After Effects we're going to create these wavy banners. They look much like the tattoo I have that proclaims my love of not only guns, but also roses. Let's get into After Effects and uh, get to it. Here in After Effects, the first thing you need to do is of course make a composition. I do this every time and I don't really know why. Uh, I'm just going to put in export as the name of this composition, because this is the one we're going to export out of here. First thing I want to do is make a background. So let's make a new solid make it blue or whatever. I don't really care. It can be whatever color you want. This has nothing to do with the rest of the tutorial, so I'm going to lock that layer. Now I'm going to create new text, and this text I'm going to write banner content, cont, content, banner content. Good. So good at spelling. You cannot even believe how good at spelling I am. I know. I know. I'm so good. Change the uh, text to be dark, and now I'm going to create a rectangle. Whoa, big rectangle. And uh, we're going to change the size. I hit UU to bring up all of its properties. I'm going to put it below the banner content. I'm going to take the banner content, select that layer, go to align here, and stick it center center. And now I take the banner, and I'm just going to bring down the size here to be like there, and uh, bring this down, 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 down. To be like this, like, you know, banner size. Now I'm going to add to this uh, polystar. Drag that poly star to be up under the rectangle path here. And then we're going to go not a star, but a polygon. Not five points, but four points. And the position, not up and down, but we're going to move it uh, over to this side here. Kind of like this. I want you to duplicate that. Call up its position property again. Move it to the other side to be negative 445. So whatever this is positive, make this one negative. So we've got that going on. Now we're going to add to this a merge paths. Where the fuck is it? There we go, merge paths. So merge paths is basically gonna create a Boolean operation between this rectangle path, this polystar path, and this polystar path. Uh, the one we want it to do is subtract, okay? So that means it's going to subtract from everything. So everything above you minus this, everything above you minus that. So we've got these things being subtracted. Okay, that looks okay. I think we've kind of missed the mark a little bit on the banner. It's not quite the right size. So let me just uh, make this, let me just make this uh, longer like so. And then uh, we'll just move these out a little bit. And do, 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 do. 475 is probably good. <laughs> Negative 475. Good, good. Much better. So you've created your banner here. This is the banner. This is all the content I'm putting into it. You can put in whatever you'd like. And why that's important, because I'm going to go layer, precompose, or whatever shortcut you use for precomposing. I'm going to call this banner content. Cool. So everything in here, it can be a logo for your company, it can be your name, it can be text, it can be pictures, whatever. Whatever you put in there, that's that's what's in there. And while we're in here, I'm just going to turn on motion blur real fast and uh, get out of that. So to create the motion, what we want is for the banner to be moving from left to right. So I'm just going to go ahead 10 frames, holding down shift, page down, call up the position with the P, call up the scale with the S, and uh, we're going to set keyframes for those. Move ahead 40 keyframes, set some more keyframes for that, one, two, three, four, and some keyframes at the end, and then move ahead 10, hit N to block off our work area, because this is going to be our work area. So in the middle, we're fine with these settings at this position and this scale. Now, we're going to go here to the position, and we're going to move it off screen. Yeah, get out of here. Get gone. So negative 960 there, and on this side, boop, all the way this way. So it's all the way gone, just like that. And then uh, you can do things like you can scale this one up a bit, and then uh, maybe scale down the ending. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know what you want to do. Do whatever you feel is right. Now I'm going to take these keyframes, hit F9 to easy ease them. I'm going to look in here at the graph editor on those. So we currently have this boob shape. Uh, let's just drag the handles out to have more of a uh, peaks and valleys shape for all of it. So that, whoop, sliding in, 
sliding out. There it goes. So that's kind of the motion that we want to have. So it's coming in and it's going out. Now we're going to go new null object. Okay, now we're going to parent the banner to the null object. And why we're doing this is so that I'm able to move this around and rotate it without having to change that in and out. So it's in and it's out this way, but it could be, you know, minus seven, minus 10, whatever. So now it's coming in at an angle. That's pretty good. Now let's get that wavy warpy stuff going on, eh? So we're gonna go here to the effects and presets and the effect we're going to use is the Bezier warp. It's in the distort. So when you apply Bezier warp, it's going to lock it to the outside of the layer. But what we're going to do is we're going to hit Collapse Transformations here, and then the Bezier Warp is going to be relative to the frame. So here's things to know about Bezier Warp, all right? If Collapse Transformations is on, that means that it's going to be relative to the frame, and the thing is going to be moving behind the effect, right? So I'm just going to screw around with these handles. We're going to do this, and then uh, I'm going to do this, like this, or maybe like this. I don't even remember. Anyway, it's it looks like something. So, as it is right now, all of this is moving with the content. So we've just warped the content, and now the the handles and everything is moving with the content. If we do this, click like this, then the content is moving through this warpy, wavy stuff here. Now, your technique or your method or your look may require one or the other. At this point, just be aware that right now it's like we're setting up uh, a distorted lens through which to look at the content, and the other way is to set it up so that the content is being warped as it travels. So you figure out which way you want to do, I'll show you this way for now. The big thing to do is just remember, change the quality up to 10. Anything less than 10 is just gross looking. What, why do I mean gross looking? Well, look at one, like this, ugh, that's foul. That's foul and unnatural. Put it up to 10, do yourself a favor. Okay, you can see that as we alter the content behind, it's gonna change basically through this lens that we've created. So what we're gonna do is we are going to bend these to be at appropriate uh, sort of bendiness as to what we want for this slightly bent out of shape uh, thing. What I like to do is use the proportion grid to help me out. Um, my proportion grid is divided into thirds. You can go After Effects Preferences, uh, Grids and Guides, and then you can set up your proportion grid to have three horizontal and three vertical blocks, which will give you this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the ruler here, and I'm going to move the ruler uh, onto these lines so that I have handles that things will snap to, and that is because I'm lazy and I prefer when handles snap to things. So, got the Bezier warp going on, snap, snap. Oh, snap, like that. Boom, good, good stuff. Now you can make this more or less extreme. I don't really know what you're into. Um, could be anything at this point. But uh, right now, as you can see, when the stuff comes in, wee, and then it leaves, woo. That might be good enough for you right there. But there are other things you can apply to this too. Like you can put in a, a slight bulge, perhaps. Perhaps that will make you happy. I don't know. I don't know what would make you happy. Um, but just make the bulge uh, large in terms of size, but small in terms of impact, and make sure the anti-aliasing is always on high for such things. Then it'll create sort of a bulge out in the middle, or I mean, you can do like a pinching. You can pinch. That's also your prerogative. So. Maybe you want negative 0.25 to, to pinch it in the middle, so it's like it's being pinched away at that point. But again, the same thing. It's not gonna follow the layer because we have collapse transformation on. If you wanted to follow the layer, this is what it looks like, okay? You would have to then animate the handles of the warp and the properties of the bulge 
in order to get it to look funky. Uh, we want it to look funky with the least amount of effort. That's why we're doing it this way. Woo, like that. Fun times. Now, the Bezier warp is not the only warp. Okay, I'm gonna say that right now, just in case anybody wants to jump on me for that nonsense. But uh, the point is that this is a fun and kooky way for it to animate on and off. And you can animate these handles. You can animate them just like you animate pretty much anything else. Um, so keep that in mind. And if you want to animate them coming and going, then go nuts. Animate these handles all around in any which ways direction. You can use them to simulate wind and stuff in that way, but we've done it this way such that, let's say I want to go in and change the banner content. Well, I can go in here and I can edit things in here only focusing on that content and then out here is where the crazy town stuff is going on so also it's uh, anti-aliasing results are pretty good you know they're not the best but they're pretty good they're getting it done for me I'm, I'm content with this and uh, there you go so this has been Evan Abrams showing you how to make these wavy banners if you want to make them wrap around and bend around things we'll probably cover that in another tutorial for now let's just focus on getting this sweet sweet bend into these layers and uh, animating things on and off and you know you can just put in things here like uh, the name of your first girlfriend or you know whatever other embarrassing things you would want tattooed on yourself in a banner and uh, we can take it from there. So if you've enjoyed this tutorial and you enjoy learning about After Effects and visual effects and blah 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 motion graphics then subscribe to this channel. There's new stuff here every week or almost every week. This one was delayed because I wanted to check my facts on a couple of things and try a few things out but hopefully this is a good result for you and it is a good segue into more exploration for you. I don't want to give you all the answers because some of the excitement is uh, knowing what's up for yourself. Anyway, uh, I'm Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching. If you need an intro to After Effects course, uh, I teach one on Skillshare.com. Link to that in the description. If you need cool stuff to use in your projects, check out EvanAbrams.com for those kinds of cool things and the project file for this very tutorial. It'll show you how I made the intro in that. And uh, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed yourself, subscribe, uh, like, and comment. If you have questions about this, comment on this video and I'll help you out on this thing. If you have questions about other things, hit me up on Twitter, at EC Abrams. Uh, check out the Google Plus page, check out the Facebook page. Anyway, that's enough uh, self-promotion for me. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you around the internet.